I'm Lily, and it has taken me a little bit of time, longer than I wanted to, to get out my set review for Magic 2020. But at long last, it is here. I know you were waiting. I'm sorry it wasn't ready for you in time for both pre-release and launch weekend, but um, hopefully this will help you out if you have any GPs coming up and uh, or other events, just like your FNM and whatnot. Like I know I'll be trying to draft throughout the entire season, but uh, yeah, no. So uh, for this video, the uh, well, the focus and the criteria I've been working on for these ones is something that's very important, especially for something that is Magic 2020. And that, of course, is, is that I am going to be rating all of the people in the set based on how much I'd like them to be my optometrist. Uh, now, obviously, none of the actual cards depict optometrists, which I think is a huge oversight on Wizards' part. Uh, for something named Magic 2020, but you know what they say about hindsight. Uh, but you know what? Despite that, uh, we're pushing forward, and because none of them actually are optometrists, we're going to assume that they are optometrists for this evaluation, because otherwise it just wouldn't work, because in reality I probably don't want any of these for to be my optometrist because none of them are trained to be, and that's something you do have to have very specialized schooling to do well. Uh, well, let us jump into it, because we have a lot of creatures to people to cover. Generally, I decided to go along with uh, humanoids, or otherwise creatures that have human or greater intelligence. So I included, like, sphinxes and things like that. Um, if there's any weird ones, I will explain their inclusion. Um, so, starting off, the absolute worst part of the optometrist for me is like when you get your eyes dilated, and then they have to do like the all like the deep like looking in your eyes with like the bright light going to your eye. That is the absolute worst part of it. Now imagine if that whole thing was that way. So that is why coming at number eighty six is fucking Cavalier of Dawn. Just, no, I don't want to have to look at him the entire time that I'm having to sit through an optometry appointment. Like, that just seems awful. And I'm just, no. Worst part, hands down, personal experience, personal vendetta. Hate that part. It's awful. I dread it every time. Although usually it's only about every other year you have to get to it, and I did it last year, so I think I'm good this year, but you never know, and it sucks. And this... Insert insult here is the embodiment of that, and just like, no, it's like even like the exact like shade of like white that you see is like shining, if, if like the thing that you like put your chin on and it goes down. No. 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 Uh, alright, next up, of course, Master Splicer. Um, well, like, medically? probably one of the most qualified people uh, to do the, to be an optometrist on this list, but at the same time, I do like having my skin. Like, mm, I, I don't want a Phyrexian as my doctor, and you can quote me on that. Just, no, no, I, I like, uh, yeah, I like having my skin. Yeah. Next, we have Embodiment of Agonies. I am not a fan of, like, any sort of doctor, and, um, one who literally has of agonies in their title isn't really selling me on and putting me at ease. Uh, yeah. No. I'm just, like, I'm pretty anti-demon in general for, like, my optometrists. If nothing else, it has to be kind of, like, 
one of the more like dual brokery demons that's like much more like oh yes i will get your soul in exchange for services but like this one is just like i want to see you suffer loser who needs eye care i wear contacts you can't tell i need to get new glasses but it's they're rough <laughs> gruesome scorcher likewise i don't really want my doctor to have gruesome in their name or scorcher yeah he just also doesn't seem very hygienic like they're just mm, not not really feeling it uh ogre siege breaker like i i don't i don't really see him as having the uh discipline for a medical profession. It's just... It's not a good career choice for him, and it's not a good choice of doctor for me. Vengeful Warchief? Again, with kind of the gruesome scorcher, like, he doesn't seem particularly, like, adhering to, like, standards, like... Like, he somehow, like, makes, like, skulls on his clothing kind of look stupid and yeah no i'm just eh bark troll again this is a guy who just like lives in the woods doesn't really seem to know what soap is and he's also missing an eye which i mean doesn't discount him from being an optometrist but like it raises questions about how well he takes care of his eyes and stuff like that. It's just, mm, maybe not. Grave digger? Like, it's, it's a zombie. It doesn't really seem to have that much, like, own thought process. That one is extremely non-hygienic. So, yeah, just, mm, mm, no. Anyway, it already has a job. It's a grave digger. Ember hauler? Like, again, another one that already has a job, and a very specific job, and that is all that's about them. And I, I'm just gonna say that, like, I, I think an optometrist maybe shouldn't have to have, like, a, uh, a, a part-time job at the foundry or wherever an ember hauler works. Also, I, mean, I don't know, I'm just kind of like, and like, I may be a bit anti-goblin in saying this, but I don't think goblins are necessarily the best choice for medical professionals. <laughs> Lavakin Brawler? She, she's made of lava. There are some problems, like, you don't necessarily have to make contact with an optometrist. Like, it actually doesn't really happen. But at the same time, there are logistical issues with being in the same room as someone made of molten, like, lava. Just... Also, what is that fabric made of? Like... Like, is it just, like, lava, like, stylization, or, or is it that just really weird fabric? I want to know. But no, it's just, like, 
there are logistical issues that make this one hard. Leafkin Druid? Like, this one's an elemental, and it is a druid, but I just feel like its anatomy is so different from my own that it probably doesn't get, like, nice, like, fleshy animals very well in terms of providing eye care. Uh, like, I, I might have ran ranked this a bit too low, but, uh, also kind of looks like, like, with that Pepperdux, you cannot move me. Like, that's not the best bedside manner. Like, I don't, I'm not asking for my optometrist to be the most friendly person, but, like, just outright stubborn is not really what I'm going for. Goblin bird crabber? Again, with the goblins. I'm not really into goblins, and you really should be washing your hands before, like, grabbing birds. Really, you shouldn't be grabbing birds. That's just a nice vector of disease you're causing there. Goblin smuggler? Like, mmm... Again, your goblins, and also, I don't know, it's, it's... I don't necessarily want my adoptometers to be involved in, like, I don't know, crime? Just, just, just my two cents. Maybe, maybe my optometrist. just, I mean, it's also not really my business, but, like, if that's part of your title, I'm not necessarily going to trust you. <laughs> Corpse Knight? Again, I'm gonna stereotype and I'm gonna be like, you know what? Undead might not make the best medical professionals, especially ones who are explicitly trained to be military professionals. Also, he probably smells. Hanged Executioner. This one's slightly higher because, like, it is a ghost who so probably doesn't smell as much. But again, they were an executioner, not, like, anything remotely that would be good for eye care or medical stuff. Like, they were specifically uh, making people less healthy. That was their job to the point of death. And, yeah, not not feeling it. Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. I don't think piracy is a good path to a medical field. Pirates never not super historically well uh, healthy people, and also not super great history of having all their eyes working. So maybe not on the pirates. Goblin Ringleader. This column's a bit higher, because, like, this one is a bit more sociable, like, knows some other ones, like, even if he may not be, like, the best, like, goblin optometrist, like, he might know and feel like, redirect me to the best goblin optometrist if he knows there's something he can't handle. But again, still quite low at number 70 for being a goblin optometrist. Just, no, nah, not really into that. Glinthorn Buccaneer? See my previous points about Pirate, but this one's a little bit higher, because he is a Minotaur, and that is slightly cooler. Like, there is a certain appeal in beyond to say, like, I'm going to my optometrist, just, oh yeah, well, who's your doctor? I'm like, I got the Minotaur God Doctor. And there's some appeal to that, but at the same time, eh. Oop, wrong way. Thunderkin Awakener. Again, with the Lavakin Brawler one, where he is made of like magma and lightning, and there's some logistical issues there. He's a shaman though, which has like a bit more like knowledge when it comes to the medical side of things, but it does seem more focused on like elemental healthcare than like human healthcare, and I'm a human. Not an elemental, so... eh. Cavalier of Flame? Again, with the elemental thing, like, it's not safe to be with this guy in the same room. Like, 
I don't care if he has a PhD, like, unless he's, like, Skyping in the optometry appointment, I can't be there without melting my face. So, no, I'm sorry, you look rad, but no. Audacious thief? I don't need an embodiment of the U.S. healthcare system to be specifically my optometrist. I have to deal that when navigating the rest of the healthcare system. Silverback Shaman. Now, these... I mean, these apes are intelligent, and that's cool, and sure, maybe he doesn't seem like... maybe he doesn't have, like, the best bedside manner, but it is cool to be like, yeah, I have an ape... ape optometrist, the ape the optometrist. <laughs> the same time, like, I don't... I don't see him as a great doctor. Sorry, dude, but you live in the jungle. <laughs> Loaming Shaman. He has got to smell so bad. So bad. I would survive me. Also, also the sanitation thing. No. But also, it's like, I don't want to be in the same room as him. Like, he does have a little bit of, like, know-how when it comes to, like, nature and stuff like that. But, like, I don't really think that carries over to optometry. So, yeah. Mm, no. You're just a gardener. Epicure of blood. I don't trust a vampire to be my doctor. I don't trust someone who can be, like... Yes, you need a blood draw. I'm like, why do I need a blood draw? You're an optometrist. And they're like, reasons. And I'm just like, mm, no. Mm, no. And he isn't even that particularly sexy. Just, eh. Blood blurgler. Honestly, this one should be lower. But same, same reason. This one's even less sexy. Knight of the Ebon Legion. Same reason. He has a cool sword, though, so that makes him a little bit higher. You can at least, like, see that, like, in the lobby of, like, the of his optometry office and be like, Hey, that's a cool sword. Yeah. That's the sword I'm gonna murder you with after I get you some new glasses. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. Kelden Raider? I'm just gonna say it, Keldror is not known for its grand tradition of optometry. They're much more about pillaging the surrounding areas in Dominaria. And I'm just gonna say that, that, that... Yeah, no, I'm just... Hmm, not really, not really feeling it. He has a cool, cool... I don't even know what animal that is, but, uh, yeah, no, just, mm. Unchained Berserker. Okay, okay, um, A, he's in prison, and, like, I'm not, I'm not the judge, not everyone in prison is, like, there for necessarily, like, like, bad reasons that would disqualify them from being a good optometrist, but th this one definitely seems like some sort of violent offender. And he is a berserker. They did have to have him, like, chained to a wall, and even that didn't help. And he is bent on revenge. And, like, even if he's, like, if he is, like, the classical idea of berserker, like, I don't want my optometrist to, like, be like, hang on, I gotta get into my mood to be able to do my optom- my- the- this appointment with you. And he does, like, the actual, like, Norse Berserker thing and just, like, eats a bunch of mushrooms, and... I'm not feeling that. Lightning Stormken? He's only really this high because he looks cool. Otherwise, it's just like, y you have an alien anatomy to me? And while well, you might have studied it, I just, mm, not as really feeling that as much. Sorcerer of the Fang. 
Okay, he's really... Sure, maybe. He has a cool hat. He is weirdly into snakes. I do think snakes are cool. But... Mm, I think he might be taking the snake thing a bit too far. Barony Vampire? See my previous notes about vampires? But this one's kind of attractive. So I care a little bit less when she murders me. Bloodthirsty Aerialist? Same reason. <laughs> Vampire of the Dire Moon? Oh, very much the same reason. But at the same time, still, I don't want to die when I'm just going to get my eyes checked. Metropolis Sprite? Fairies might know how to do optometry, but they will also sew your eyes shut. And this one has attacked people. And... I'm not interested in that. Like, I'm sure if you're on a good side, it will be fine. But I don't want to risk having to go to appointment on one of her bad days. And the next thing I know, I walk out in like 500 years of fast. And now. Spectral Sailor. This one is higher than the other pirates because by the fact that he's a ghost means that he is probably less disease ridden. ridden. And that's it. I don't trust him, but he does have like great hair. I can appreciate them for that, and he has a good look about him, even if he isn't super qualified necessarily to be a, uh, a, an optometrist. Brineborn Cutthroat? Uh, again, uh, mm, pirates, I'm not, I'm not really feeling the, the Pirate Optometrist League. Uh, I don't know why this one's this high. I guess kind of merfolk are kind of cool. Like you have to like, like how would that work? Like, do you have to go underwater? Because like that changes everything. Like the way that you like see things, like they, you can't calculate the, like all the prescriptions for the same thing above and below water. Maybe that's the point. Like that you go to, you go to the merfolk optometrist to get like the prescriptions for like prescription goggles to like see underwater and stuff. And they specialize in that. There we go. But even for that, still a pirate. Fairy Miscreant. Same notes on fairies. This one has not actively harmed someone recently in its flavor text. It's just cutting up a book. So yeah. Woodland Champion. She has a great fashion sense, but really... There's not much going on to tell me, like, how good of an optometrist she'd be. She just has a good fashion sense, which kind of puts her, like, just smack in the middle for me. Yeah. Iron Root Warlord. Now, the Iron Root Tree Folk on Dominaria are actually quite kind of friendly people, and uh, aren't, aren't too bad about that. But, um, at the same time, I just feel like the, 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 well, that friendliness might be there, and like, I just feel like their anatomy and they're just too different from me to like really understand my medical needs. Like, sure, I might study that, but at the same time, I feel just... It's just that that difference is a bit too there. Also, there's like a, this height problem where like, to get up to his eye level, like, the, the optometric chair is like, I have to like, like climb like a 10-foot ladder to get up there so we like actually see at your eye level, so... Cavalier of Thorns? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, they're an elemental, but they're a bit more, like, human of an elemental. And, uh, mostly he looks cool. There's not much lore on these guys, but, uh, yeah, he seems nice. I like his little horn things. Uh, just don't get close, because it might get pokey. But, uh, yeah. Centaur Corsair. Now, again, like, these aren't, like, particularly, like, close to civilization, but, like, 
I don't know. I don't know. I kind of... We're in the middle of them, where they're just kind of like, eh. There's not much to say about them. So there's not much to say about them. Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. Okay, I feel like in the short term, if Soren agrees to do something, he will do it. And like, I guess like if you go to appointment, like he'll do it and it'll be fine, but I just don't feel like you're going to get that warm of a reception from him. And yeah, I just like, he feels like he's like too much going on. Like he's like, you're just like there the whole time. And he's just like, goes on and on about like getting revenge and like mourning the loss of like everything he loves and things like that. And it's just kind of a drag and a downer the whole t appointment. So yeah. Also, he's yellow for some reason. So who knows? Starfield Mystic. I feel like he's definitely the kind of person who would be like, you walk in and he like, you leave with like several like healing crystals that are supposed to like cleanse your aura to so you can like see better and that's not actually gonna help me. I'm sorry, but I, I want to see an actual medical professional, not some spiritualist. Moorland Inquisitor. Again, it's kind of in the middle here, but like, he would probably just end up... I don't need an Inquisition while being having also my eyes tested. That's just not really what I need. Agent of Treachery. He would definitely seal, like, sell my medical records or otherwise use them for nefarious purposes. But he might also know what he's doing. And like, he might, like, if he does have a use for me, like, he might actually, like, be able to give me good medical treatments. I'm mixed on this guy. But really having my information at his mercy, because medical professionals can access a lot of your information, and I'm not too sure about that. Bone clad necromancer. Necromancers know a pretty good idea of like how people uh people uh like they have to know a fair bit about anatomy. She has some good like bone aesthetic, which I can appreciate. Uh but yeah, I think I think you shouldn't unfairly discriminate against necromancers. And you know what, sometimes at heart life is hard and it's hard to find a job as a necromancer and sometimes you have to go into like optometry. And yeah. One thing though is that her like helmet thing does appear to cover her eyes, so I'm not sure what's up about that. Squad captain? Again, this is one of those who's just like smack dab in the middle. There's not much to say, but she seems friendly enough. Good, good team player. Yeah. Vivian, Arcbow Ranger. Like, she is a ranger. Rangers do, like, generally know, like, at least, like, a lot of, like, kind of, like, even if it isn't, like, the super, like, strict, like, academic medical stuff, but they do know a lot about anatomy and stuff. Uh, so, like, she has, like, the know-how kind of down. But at the same time, knowing Vivian's character, she doesn't have a great bedside manner. It would just be, like, I feel like it would just be, like, strained, awkward silence the entire time. Ooh, and that's very social anxiety heightening. Uh, and so I'm like, mm, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not Vivian. Ew. Inspiring Captain. Kind of the same as the other, like, eh, ones, but, like, at least this one is inspiring. Like, I'll get my eyes, my eyes checked, and I'll learn that I can be the best I can be. Also, got those Innistrad awesome hats. Yeah. Elvish Reclaimer. 
Honestly, this guy just has good hair. Like, that's the main reason. Good hair. I hope you can see well. I don't know. Maybe that translates. I don't know. Mostly because I like his hair. And he's good, like, I like, I like this, like, just sleeves, no shirt. Like, mm, respect to that look. <laughs> Sky Knight Vanguard. I mean, the Boros aren't particularly known for their optometry, but surely the Legion has to, have, like, know someone, and, like, even if he doesn't know, like, you can probably redirect me to, like, the person, like, like, they're like the per like their unit medic or something, and they probably have to deal with that sometimes. Like, eyesight is important when being an oversized police force. Yeah. Steadfast sentry. I don't know. He just seems like a guy who like might be a little bit grumpy at first, but has a good heart. And overall, he also seems like he would have a good laugh and like have like a good chuckle, like in the middle of a conversation, in the middle of the appointment. Yeah, I don't know. I want to get a drink with him. He seems like a good guy. Yeah. Cavalier of Night. Not really to have like as an optometrist necessarily, but that would be a rad logo. Just saying. I don't know why it would fit an optometry office, but it does look cool. Also, uh, if that guy walked in, I'd be like, I don't know what's happening, but I guess you're my optometrist, and uh, this will be a cool story later if I survive. <laughs> Howling Giant. Like, again, like, a lot of, like, the prior considerations about like, yeah, he doesn't seem like the most hygienic or know the best thing, but he does come with puppies. And I'm, even if it's a bad appointment, he does have puppies to pet, and I'm all into that. Yeah. Dragon Mage. This is the only other dragons I included, because like dragons are like sometimes intelligent and sometimes not, but uh, this one is, and uh, I don't know how, how, it might be interested, like, the scale issue that we've talked about before, where, where it is much larger than me, it might have some issues there, but, like, it is cool being able to say, like, yeah, yeah, my eye doctor's a dragon. Mm-hmm. And he's also obviously very studied and learned, because he is a wizard, so, uh, but I just feel there's some other things. Also, like, they're very different, like, they're reptiles and some different things going off their eyes, and there's some interesting thing there, and like there's that lack of connection there. Like, I don't know how many like shared life experiences I can like make small talk with this guy. Queenwood Sentinel. I mean, I guess it's one of those ones where it's like, you know what, he may not be a great optometrist, but he is a very patient. Um, obviously he's a sentinel, so he has to have like take care of his eyes himself, and yeah. Uh, not much else to say about that. Cloud can see her. Sure, it's elemental. Sure, it's very different than me. But that's literally in their name. Their job is seeing. And sure, that's probably in like the divination metaphorical sense, but you have seer in your name. That's enough for me. <laughs> I've condensed all of the Chandras into one. Uh, just because I have about the same thing to say, but, um, I don't think she'd be the worst, but I don't think Chandra has the patience for medical school. That's about what I have to say. I just, like, don't think she would get there in the end. Like, I don't see her as a doctor. Like, I love her. She's amazing and wonderful and cute, but... I don't think she can make it through that much school. So, I believe in you, but this is probably not the right path for you. Apostle of Purifying Light. Like, this is, we're turning into like the ones that are like actually kind of like magical healers, but this one just is kind of like, 
yeah, you're good at like banishing darkness and stuff, but like how good are you at like banishing like the fact that I just can't read very well beyond like this far? Like, it's not a darkness problem, it's like a focus problem. He'd just be like, you know what you need? You need more light, more purifying light. I'm just like, nah, that's that's not gonna help. That's that's like, no, 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 you clearly have darkness. No, 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 it's just out of focus. No, no, no. You need to, you need more purifying light, clearly. I'm just like, that's that's not gonna get anywhere. So, but at the same time, I was like, it might help a little bit. Who knows? Bishop of Wings? Like, I'm much more inclined to, like, trust angels, because, like, angels do have, like, specifically, like, healing powers as part of their thing. And this one may not be a great optometrist, but, like, she could, like, refer me to an optometrist. So, uh, yeah. Like, kind of like a middle, middle person just to get there. Uh, but she might, like, she might have picked up things with, like, her angel friends, and, and she's probably too busy being a bishop. Let's be honest. Diamond Knight? I have no idea why this is so high. He just looks cool. <laughs> Brightwood Tracker. Mostly because she just looks very friendly. And I would have a conversation with her like while like she's like, I don't know, doing the one or two. One or two. I feel like she'd have a nice, like, very, like, pleasant voice, and, uh, yeah. She just seems nice. Tomebound Lich. He's very menacing, very undead, but he also knows a lot. And, uh, yeah. I feel like if you're gonna get, have an undead optometrist, a lich is the way to go, and... You know what, like, I like the idea that they're, they're like, he's like, going through and he's like, Okay, I've, I have now consulted what I have seen with my measurements. Opens glowing blue book. Mm -hmm. Yes, it appears that we need to boost up your left eye's prescription a little bit. Closes ominous blue glowing book. Let me go get something to test. And then walks out. And then comes out with a new contact case, opens it up and just like that glowing blue light comes out. I don't know where I'm going with this fantasy, but, uh, yeah. Just don't touch him, because he does have death touch. Yeah. Sephara, Sky's Blade. I mean, of all the angels, like, angels I feel like are inherently not a terrible choice, just due to their innate natures, but, uh, Sephara does seem much more, like, on the combat focus side of things, and not really on, like, the, the healing humanitarian side. So that's why she's, like, kind of, like, the lowest of them. She does have cool swords, though. Herald of the Sun. Similar reason. Um, some other stuff going on. The brightness is still an issue for me. Like, I'll be honest. The whole, like, shining lights in my eyes. Mm, not a fan. But, uh, yeah. I mean, again, it was one of those, and I was like, of the angels, maybe not the best. But, uh, yeah. Villis, Broker of Blood. Maybe not as your go-to, but like, let's be honest, how expensive can be like, fixing my eyes? Like, surely, like, that can't be that much of my soul just to be like, okay, let's just like, not have to go to the optometrist anymore. And, uh, yeah. Like, we'll see what the price is. Like, I might turn it down, but like, you might be able to like, uh, Fix me up something. So, yeah. It might be an, end up being a terrible idea, but hey, it will be effective. Daybreak Chaplain. It's just kind of like, of like, generically, like, yeah, I would trust her to be an optometrist. Uh, she looks friendly enough. She's a healer. Got other things going on. She's got cool like, hair spikes coming off. With the cool, like, single pauldron. Yeah. Scholar of the Ages. Like, she does seem to be more of a historian, but, uh, yeah, no, like, 
like over like all the healers and stuff, like she seems like she would have one of the best like nice like scientific knowledges of like what to do for this and like the most qualified kind of to be a medical professional. Uh and actually like make it through like, I don't know, medical school, which is kind of important. Uh also she can cool do like cool glowy effects and like holographic projections and stuff. Like no more static charts with letters on them. It's like, ooh, can you read that illusion projected over there? Ooh, can you do that one? Yeah. Pattern matcher. I just want a robot who can do all this for me. Um, cause let's be honest, like, like a lot of, um, like outside of like weird, like fringe situations, like a lot of it is, is kind of the Okay, let's figure out what is the closest one to your prescription that's kind of like root and kind of maybe procedural. And I feel like this one, like, it, it's a bit more complex of a pattern than what he's describing here, but I feel like he could lure pick it up. And I think it'd be kind of cool. Here's my robot optometrist. <laughs> Kethis, the hidden hand. I just feel like he's probably good for, like, on the administrative front, like, keeping very good records and, um, just kind of the, the very organized and orderly and doing a job of, like, keeping up, like, with trends, making sure, like, keeping an eye on if, like, your vision's, like, deteriorating over time and I just feel like he'd be very diligent in that way. As well as kind of, like, does not do having, like, that know-how, so... Sage's Road Tennyson. I mean, he's literally a sage, hangs out with other sages, uh, like, yeah, I mean, like, he's, he's just, he's literally, like, an academic, and he's probably a good job of that, and, like, the doll can also kind of, like, have, like, that, like, artificer angle, uh, too, where, like, they do, like, for, like, kind of, like, the, the hardware side of things, they could, like, do that with, like, the glassware and things like that, so... I feel like he would just be, like, nice and efficient. Also, he's blue, which is cool. Kalia, Zenith Seeker. Similar to kind of, like, the Bishop of Wings, where, like, the Bishop of Wings knows people, like, knows angels that can get into contact that can do this, but she is, like, the triple threat. She can find an angel who can do it if, like, it's a bit beyond them. You can find a demon if, like, you're willing to pay that price. Okay, dragons are super useful, I think, in the optometry department, but, like, she has the connections. So, yeah. It feels like she, she's gotten about a fair bit of power herself from those things, so... Yeah, no, she, she, she probably has, like, the, the, the works around it to hand, know her way around the, the optometrist's chair herself. Fencing ace? This guy I could actually see as being an optometrist, like, like, yeah, he's an optometrist, but he's also, like, really into fencing on the side, because, like, the stereotype of, like, fencers being, like, oh, yes, very well-educated and learned, and, like, when you're, like, at the appointment, he'll, like, talk about his hobby of, like, fencing and, like, doing all this stuff, cool stuff, and I could just see this guy as actually being an optometrist, and, uh, He'd be kind of a cool guy. Like, you never really get, like, close to him because he is your doctor, but, uh, he always has an interesting story to tell. Cavalier of Gales. Honestly, just of all the Cavaliers, I think he looks the friendliest. Not much else. It's just like, hmm. He's like, yeah, he's like all, like, little, like, spikes here, but, like, he's still, like, very fluid and he's very friend-shaped. And I like him. Yeah. <laughs> Healer of the Glade? Like, I'm not sure if this thing is, like, sentient, but, like, I feel like it'd be nice to just, like, not have to go through all the trouble and just be like, I walk up to this elemental, and oh look, my vision is cured. And I get to be in, like, this cool glade in the woods that's all magical and naturey, naturey, and it'll be all nice and stuff. And then I can see again. Ooh. Dawning Angel. Now, this is an angel, like, specifically for, uh, 
like healing and whatnot and uh also this angel has like really cool hair for an angel like i like the the like uh like very much like very much like tied up and like with like the the like the spread with like the wings and stuff and just like very good and just like kind of like yeah like there is all the normal like angel problems of like okay most optometrist optimists are kind of cramped and like fitting those wings in there is gonna be a bit of an issue but they'll get it it'll be fine Rian, angel of reaper like she does very much into kind of like that whole healing side of things but she is kind of boring let's be honest but uh yeah yeah that's about what i'm gonna say under this I will say this is the only non-pack card. I did exclude all like the Planeswalker deck cards. Mu Yongling, Sky Dancer. Like, she's a Hydromancer, and we don't actually have that much idea of like her personality. But honestly, she seems friendly enough. And uh I mean she is blue aligned, so she probably has the know-how. Like, let's be honest, I probably trust blue characters to be an optometrist the most, generally. Uh, and sure, she's more dealing with like flying and stuff, and that's cool, but who's to say that she also doesn't also know about eyes? Who knows? She just looks cool. <laughs> and doesn't seem, I would not feel necessarily like I'm gonna leave that appointment for the worst either, which is like, honestly, puts her above most of the people in the set. <laughs> Soul Mender? Another one of like, just like, he is literally like a healer, and I'm not really sure how I feel about like, just like, my optometrist just being like, your eyes are magicked into being good. But, um, because in the minute, is that really an optometrist? Like, but, uh, Mostly because he has an awesome beard. Yeah. Yeah, that's just like very nice beard. I like it. His whole hair, like his whole like hair like profile. Mm, very good. Kaikar Winds Fury. I just want to say I have I have a bird doctor. Bird doctor. Renowned weaponsmith. Okay, granted, he is a weaponsmith, but I feel like he would be very good in kind of like the actual like creation of like glasses and other things, because it's very similar like structural skills, putting those things together. Like he he has the engineering expertise, and uh, probably just like be, with, with weapons, saying like having that optics knowledge is also useful. And I just feel like uh, while he may not be as like proficient on the medical side of things. He has that knowledge of like the actual like solutions to the things I think would just make him really good. And uh Yeah. Locks it off, life chanter. You know what's cooler than bird doctor? Elephant doctor. Also he is also about healing and whatnot. But elephant doctor. Elephant MD. <laughs> Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. I'm kind of thinking this has more kind of like a complex, like a, like, like a version of like the pattern matcher, whereas like, this is a very learned robot who has like gone all over like the world and has now settled down and become an optometrist. And I just find that funny. And also, I would totally go to that optometrist. Adamus all seeing. They are literally all seeing. Do I need to say more? Like, eyes are their thing. I mean, they are sphinx. They're not like not, like they could be higher, but, um, and it might be a bit too on the nose. Uh, but yeah. Also, Sphinx is, like, has, like, traditionally maybe don't have, like, the best, um, conversational skills, like, but, uh, yeah, I could, I could, uh, 
like, it's just like the branding is already so on point that you have to give it to them. Angel of Vitality. Like, of all the angels, this is the one that you want to be your optometrist. Like, all about that. Uh, I like the just ribbons everywhere. I feel like that's a nice, like, fun, playful decoration for, like, the office. Kind of, like, not the very, like, kind of stale, drab, like, doctor's offices that you often get. And I feel like it's good. Also, she's really cute. Also, it's, like, the one that's, like, the life-gaining angel and all about healing and whatnot. So, yeah. Also, she's about that barefoot life, which I can get into, because shoes are dumb. And number one, we have to go with a Johnny. A Johnny is A, good at healing magic, B, is like the friendliest person you know, is a giant kitty, uh, just wants the best for you, and you can trust him, and I want him to be my doctor, and specifically this is my optometrist, and I just feel like you'd do a great job, like you'd just have a great rapport with his rapport with his patients, and he just he just wants the best for everyone and is good at what he does and he believes in you and I believe in his ability to uh, excel at optometry. Yeah. What a good kitty. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, that is it for all of this, and I hope you enjoyed this very, uh, important, uh, analysis of Magic 2020. Like, again, like, I really feel like there, there should have been more explicit optometrists in this set. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's, you know what, it's, it's one of those things where going forward they can, like, make sure, like, they fix these things going forward. That said, it, it will be a long time before we get to the point where Magic 2020 will exist again. We'll have to, like, restart the date system somehow, so we need, like, some cataclytic event, and it's gonna need to be, like, 2,020 years from then, so it's gonna be a while before they get another chance. But, uh, yeah, so they have time to reflect on this oversight. Uh, I mean, of course, there is also Commander 2020, where they can nice have, uh, finally have Optometrist Tribal, uh, which we've been asking for forever. Uh, but, uh, yeah. No, do you disagree with any of my rankings? Like, is, is there one that, like, you, you have experienced with, like, with your pre-release draft that, like, you played and just, like, didn't affect the gameplay, but you were, like, you played this and just, like, just thought and, like, you know what? That actually would make a very good optometrist, and, uh, then I might have overlooked. Um, so let me know. I want to, like, be able to choose my fictional optometrist better, and I think we'll just benefit from having that shared dialogue. So, uh, yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a wonderful night. I hope you sleep well. And, as always, may your story smile upon you.